Welcome back to Tabletop Salt. I'm Ross, and today I'm going to continue my segments on analysing the Chaos Space Marine Codex. Today I'm going to look at the Defiler, uh, a very interesting unit that has sort of changed quite a lot in a, sort of the function it, it goes by each edition. Uh, certainly when it first came out it was quite an interesting unit, to say the least. So if you haven't seen these before, how it works is that I'm going to look at the unit in the Codex, look at some of its stats and war gear options. And then I'm going to speak about a bit of its loadout and rule suggestions, speak about Legion traits where applicable, psychic abilities and stratagems that would be quite useful. So with that, let's, let's have a look at the Defiler. So the Defiler uh, has sort of uh, varying sort of stats depending on its damage. Its movement uh, uh, goes from 8, 6 and 4. So 8 is quite fast, but the same as a Dreadnought, to 4 which is quite slow. Its bl ballistic skill deteriorates from 4 at maximum efficiency to 5 even at lowest efficiency. And lastly, its attacks go from 4, which is okay, to 2, which is bad. Uh, so you can see obviously with a lot of vehicles that it does deteriorate quite uh, quite badly there. But in general, uh, it's mainly sort of the attacks in combat and the ballistic skill in shooting. So it's those two phases that get a little bit hindered. Now there is sort of ways around that in the combat phase, but I'll talk about that later. Weapon skill always remains 4 plus, so you're going to always be hitting, well, 50% there. But skill, as I said, does TD. A mighty strength 8, so that'll contend against things like knights, etc., where you'll basically be hitting quite efficiently there, which is uh, quite nice, you know, uh, and it also gets a lot stronger. Toughness 7, well, you're not as tough as, say, you know, knights and things like that, you know, or Lehman Rosses, which I think are toughness 8, but kind of to be expected on that one as well. So toughness 7 is not bad. Attacks again, does deteriorate, but starts at 4, which is not bad. Leadership 8, uh, which shouldn't really have much effect unless there's psychic shenanigans and various abilities. And then a 3 plus save, which is kind of standard as well. So the Defiler is armed with Bow Cannon, Reaper Auto Cannon, Twin Heavy Flamer and Defiler Claws. Got a bunch of different options on it as well uh, to choose from. Uh, you can exchange the Twin Heavy Flamer for Havoc Launcher or Defiler Scourge. So really you're going for up close uh, with the Flamer, a little bit of range with Havoc Launcher and then obviously combat with the Defiler Scourge. Uh, you can replace the Reaper Auto Cannon with Twin Heavy Bolter, which means more shots, or Last Cannon, which is less shots, but stronger. Uh, all, all of them cost different prices as well, and you may also take a combi weapon if you like as well. Highly don't recommend taking a combi plasma, which I think you can get, because uh, I believe if you supercharge it, you do die. So don't take combi plasmas on vehicles, because if you supercharge it, you adventurous, you just don't. I'm pretty sure it does kill you. So yeah, in terms of uh, special abilities, we have Demonic, so as a 5 or pinball save, which ain't too bad. Only really going to make so much an effect if you're against things that are minus 3, because minus 2 still brings you to 5, so it brings you to 5 to 6, dependently. So against minus 3, minus 4, helps there. Uh, Infernal Regeneration, at the beginning of each of your turn, this model heals one wound. I can't stress how much that really does actually help more than you think it does. Uh, during a game, that can be a potential of between 5 and 7 wounds recovered. It's just, you know, at the beginning of each of your turn, you just keep racking up wounds. Can be really, really good. I've managed to go up in efficiency because of it really, really well. It explodes. If this model is reduced to 0 wounds, roll a d6 before removing it from the battlefield. When it 6 explodes and each unit within 6 inches suffers d3 mortal wounds. Can be quite good. This is a monster that does like to sometimes scuttle into combat. So if you are near loads of your opponent's units, you can throw a bunch of mortal wounds. And then we also have Smoke Launcher, which is once per game, instead of shooting any weapons in the shooting phase, this model can use its Smoke Launchers until your next shooting phase. Your opponent must subtract one from all hit rolls for ranged weapons that target this vehicle. So yeah, plenty of special rules, plenty of sort of weapons that can be used on it. Before going to the sort of... Uh, you know, suggest the loadout and rules for these. Important thing to note on it. Important to mention that I'm speaking about this in purely a Chaos Space Marine Codex sort of, you know, way of discussing it. Uh, I'm not going to be discussing the sort of, you know, ways to use it in terms of Thousand Suns attachment, 
a detachment, Death Guard Codex detachment. I think Death Guard can take to file, I'm pretty sure they can. Uh, I'm not going to really speak about it if it's like, you know, demon abilities that may augment with it. Basically, I'm focusing on the Chaos Space Marine Codex if you are taking them pure Chaos Space Marines. When I get around to maybe discussing other codexes, I will have a look at it in their sense as well. But that doesn't stop any of you guys from commenting below. I've had some great comments uh, from people who have suggested so sort of, I think it was uh, Chaos Spawn was a really good one, uh, Possessed, all these things. They've suggested some really good sort of synergy between other codexes in this un these units. But I am speaking about them purely as Chaos Space Marines. What you get in the book. So yeah. With that, a couple of things I want to say on the filer. So, you know, the filer is quite important to me because I remember when it was like, it first came out, I think. Uh, you know, when it, I think it was during the Eye of Terror campaign, roughly around that time. And it was, you know, quite iconic at the time. It was this big, you know, big scary thing, head bigger than Land Raider and Dreadnoughts, armed with battle cannon, where it used to be, you know, mainly Liam Ross had the battle cannon, and this thing comes along and it's walking you know, with pincers and everything, you're like, why has it got a battle cannon? Because it can. So it was quite scary back then. Now it's kind of slightly different, you know, it's been quite a few years since it came out. Uh, now you've got things like knights and Lord of Skulls and demon primarchs flying about. So it's no longer inspires the fear it once did. It also, the Defiler specifically, helped me uh, quite significantly in a 2004 and a Dawn of War, if you remember that game, a match against David, where basically I just sort of spanned production of these guys quicker than David expected and used the bow cannons to basically absolutely destroy David. And we were playing this game for like two to three hours. And David has now waited 14 years for me to give him a rematch for that one and he still hasn't got it. And every once in a while I get sort of David going, so do you want to play Dawn of War tonight, and I'm like, nah, not playing, you can't have your rematch, and it drives him nuts. So yeah, 14 years, he's still waiting, it was roughly about 14 years, give or take 14, 13 years, drives him nuts. So it was all thanks to the Defiler that I managed to get a good, good victory on David and Dawn of War all those years ago, when we were a lot younger. Uh, good times. However, never mind all this nostalgia, I could speak about all the stuff when playing the Eye of Terror campaign, when I, I think I first got a Defiler and it was awesome and I was playing with like plague zombies and things. But no, I'm speaking about it in 8th edition, so I've got to focus in on that. Uh, the Defiler is an interesting unit, I think you need to focus on what you want to achieve from it uh, to get the most out of it. Try and do a bit of everything and it's not going to do it too well. So I believe with this, there's kind of like two loadouts that I think are quite good. So begin with the sort of ranged loadout, which is a walking crab with lots of guns. Uh, Defiler armed bow cannon, twin last cannon, havoc launcher, and Defiler claws. So this is more the ranged version of the Defiler. Uh, the bow cannon and the twin last cannon are fearsome ranged weapons capable of doing a fair bit of damage. Uh, the havoc launcher are kind of meh, but really cheap and benefit from what uh, what this loadout wants to do, which is kind of use the Demon Forge stratagem in the shooting phase. But I'll we'll get into that a wee bit later. Uh, but it's very important for demon engines in general that you use the Demon Forge sort of ability. It's really really good. So you want to use this one in the shooting phase because all those weapons will benefit from it. Also, unlike other vehicles armed with similar loadouts, you can actually defend yourself as well uh, with the option of having, obviously, your Defiler Claws. So dropping in, shut down a Defiler may not be as good because, you know, it can still defend itself if need be. Overall, to get the most out of this loadout, you want to stay still to maximise your accuracy and load up on powerful guns. Use Demon Forge to improve accuracy and your wounds and then lob battle cannons and last cannon shots at various targets. Um, you can switch out the Havoc Launcher if need be, but it's mainly to make this sort of a big mobile base of, of you know, guns. Yep, next one, um, the next one is sort of my melee variant, which is the Scuttling Crab Creature with Giant Claws. Uh, Defiler armed with battle cannon, Defiler Scourge, Twin Heavy Bolter, and Defiler Claws. This is the combat variant of Defiler, and frankly my preferred option. Uh, the Defiler is a fearsome walking chaos crab machine, and being strength 16 with its claws and strength 12, 
Yep, strength 12, had to double check that. With the Scourge, which also brings it up to a mighty 7 attacks, 4 at full efficiency with the Claws, 3 with the Scourge, uh, at peak efficiency, and 5 at the worst, and your weapon skill also does not deteriorate, uh, does mean it's going to cause a lot more havoc in, in combat. Uh, I mean, like, the Defiler Scourge also does hit pretty hard as well. It makes it strength 12, minus 2 AP, and 3 damage, so it can hurt pretty hard as well. Uh, no one wants the Defiler to march down the field and begin causing chaos. Uh, I mean, you still get your battle count shot, so they're hitting at the 5s. But we ain't worried about that because basically we, you know, we want to basically roll down the field and start ripping your opponent apart. Uh, you can distract your opponent by taking quite a few hits from them as well because uh, obviously you're quite tough. Uh, you know it can generally be a real pain to bring down. It has 14 wounds, toughness seven, five up in ball, restores one wound. Smoke launchers, if you decide to give up the shooting, can mean minus one to hit as well. Uh, and then there's other ways to augment that as well. It can really tempt your opponent to waste a lot of shots in the shooting phase to try and bring this down as it basically scuttles on towards you. Uh, with other stratagems, don't forget Demon Forge. Uh, this is also better in the fight phase as well, where you want to use Demon Forge in the fight phase to get more uh, hits, uh, hits and wounds uh, successfully through. Uh, and psychic abilities can really make this such a pain and difficult object to move. Honestly, I like the idea of this version a lot, and uh, I'm very annoyed our defiler on the channel is not armed this way. You could also argue you can exchange the Scourge for the Twin Heavy Flamer, which honestly ain't a bad option either. Uh, it helps clear away chaff quite effectively, but is a very short range and it's expensive, and personally I'd rather hit more in combat and focus in on Demon Forge benefiting me more there than, you know, sort of trying to do shooting or combat, you know, half done either way. Personally, you know, go for shooting or go for combat. But the Heavy Flamer, sure, it still hurts pretty hard. If you're tempted by it, go for it. You know, but you are giving up the Scourge, which I personally quite like in this edition. So I'm speaking about Legion traits now. Sadly, uh, Defilers, like many other sort of vehicles for Marines, Custodies, all that jazz, uh, Chaos and Loyalist alike, do not get uh, Legion traits, even though things like, you know, Lehman Russes, etc. do. So yeah, though we don't get them, I will mention them and speak about ones that would benefit the Defiler, and oh boy, a few would. So, Alpha Legion, hid in plain sight. Your opponent must subtract one from hit rolls that target Units with this trait if they are if they are more than twelve inches away. Yeah, we love it. Combat variant, not so much, uh, but still more survivability in this guy. Excellent. Can you imagine having Alpha Legion and Smoke Launchers and a certain psychic ability? I'll speak about later. For minus three ten in this guy. Oh boy, that'd be fun, but uh, not quite. Uh, World Eaters, Butcher's Nails. When a unit with this trait makes a successful charge, you can make one additional attack with each of the models in the unit in the uh, sequential fight phase. An extra strength 16 attack? Sure, why not? Night Lord, Sir Tactics. Models in the enemy unit must subtract one from leadership characteristics for each unit with this trait that is within 6 inches of theirs to a maximum of minus 3. Because uh, this thing should be terrifying, uh, you know, or it was back in the day, and it has a huge area of effect, multiple units could be affected, maybe good. Emperor's Children, flawless perfection. Uh, units with this trait always fight in the first in the charge phase, even if it didn't charge. If an enemy unit has units that charged or with similar abilities, then alternate choosing units to fight with, starting with the player whose turn is taking place. So I really think of this as like sort of the best ability. I find it more of a defensive thing. If you're going to be combat, you're going to be charging and getting in first anyway. So you don't get the true benefit from this. However, you may be charged and you know your opponent might be bringing in like Thunderhammer Storm Shields or something painful against the Defiler and then against something else. Well, it forces them to think what goes first in this case, you know. Do you let, you know, do you hit the Defiler and then maybe your Demon Prince goes next and damages that unit? Or do you get the unit to damage the Demon Prince and then the Defiler may go next? Uh, so I, you know, it's, it's very handy to have Flawless Perfection. But I find it's too defensive. i rather be a bit more aggressive or Alpha Legion's a really good defensive ability too. 
So yeah, alas, you know, no Legion traits for Chaos Vehicles. I don't understand why, same with Loyalists, so I suppose it's fair, but yeah, confuses me that. But anyway, it is what it is. It'd be nice to have, but we don't. Psychic abilities. So there is a few psychic abilities that do benefit the Defiler, and quite a lot in some ways as well. So we've got Prescience, Warp Charge 7. If manifested, select a Heretic Stars unit within 18 inches of the Psyker. You can add one to hit rolls made for the unit until the start of the psychic phase. This helps the Defiler massively and is a very strong con uh, contender for this psychic ability because it affects you know both in your shooting and fight phase and technically your opponent's fight phase as well. Uh, it can be really, really good. So you can get some real mile mileage on this from the Bow Cannon or Last Cannon or right up to the Defiler Claws and the Scourge as well. You know, uh, honestly it's not bad, mostly I think in combat for sheer weight of attacks. But put Prescience on it, you can march down the field, fire your Bow Cannon, fire your other stuff, then charge and you get the benefit in all worlds. So yeah, Prescience, quite good on the Defiler. Uh, next up, we're going to go with Warp Time. Warp Charge 6, if manifested, to pick a Retic Stars unit within 3 inches of the Psyker. That unit can move as if it was the movement phase. You cannot use Warp Time on a unit more than once per psychic phase. I feel I haven't talked about like Warp Time in a while, which is, you know, for some reason, I, I don't know, I think it's been a while since like the Fast Attacks or something. Either way, a Defiler uh, moves the potential 16 inches in a turn. Uh, is a terrifying prospect to behold. Getting your opponent line will certainly give them something to think about and a possible turn, uh, turn one charge, which would be absolutely hilarious with this thing. Uh, next we've got Miasma of Pestilence, Warp Charge 6. If manifested, select a visible Nurkle Heretic Stars unit within 18 inches of the Psyker. Until the start of the next Psyker phase, your opponent must subtract one from hit rolls that target the unit. I really like this ability, uh, though you cannot benefit from the Alpha Legion rule on top of it, which would have been nice. You can benefit from Smolt Launchers and Miasma of Pestilence, which is minus two to hit, which is a real, real pain for your opponent. Uh, you know, I'd fire the moon down the field, which is minus two to hit in ranged, minus one in combat is going to give, you know, something for your opponent to think about and we'll have to dedicate a lot of resources to bring it down. So minus two to it is always very, very nice to have. Or just standard in Elder, you know, in Elder World. Anyway, <laughs> Elder, Harlequins. Delightful Agony is Warp Charge 6. Mark of Slanesh only. If manifested, select a visible Slanesh Heretic Stars unit within 18 inches of Psyker. Till the start of your next Psyker phase, roll a d6 each time a model in the unit loses a wound. On a 5+, plus, it does not lose that wound. I would personally choose Miasma of Pestilence over Delightful Agonies when augmenting, augmenting the Defiler. Potentially minus 2 to hit, even for just the first turn, is going to give a lot of benefits and a lot of Plasma Builders a lot to think about. Uh, you know, you know, it's, you know, it means that your opponent with Plasma is running a huge chance of minus 2 to hit of frying themselves and causing damage to you. Still ignoring one thirds of the wounds that actually do make it through with Delightful Agonies may be absolutely excellent as well as making this, you know, the Defiler much more of a survival beast. In fact, it may be better taking Delightful Agonies and then also regenerating wounds at the start of your turn. Uh, generally, it's just gonna make them a real, real pain to bring down. Which one is better? I'm not sure, I've not checked yet, but I personally using them on the Defiler. I think both are great options. Next up in terms of stratagems, now this is going to be a safe go-to one. Any time you play any sort of demon engine, you're going to be pretty much using this one, like just handing them command points as if they were candy every time you get a chance. So yeah, we've got Demon Forge, cost one command point. Use a stratagem in your shooting or fight phase when a Chaos Space Marine Demon Vehicle is chosen to attack. You can reroll all failed hit and wound rolls for the model until the end of the phase. So this is an excellent stratagem for its points, ensuring whichever demon engine uh, you're using on will do pretty darn well. The Defiler can benefit from this either in the shooting phase with the bow cannon uh, and last cannon, or in the fight phase with the Defiler claws and the scourge. Honestly, a fantastic option for whichever demon engine uses it. 
you know, I don't know which one particularly can use it best, except for the Heldrake, you know, that is, that is never the best option for this. So it's kind of debatable which one does it best. Uh, it may be better on the Fiends rather than Defiler, because both of them focus on specific phases, uh, maybe a little bit more than the Defiler, uh, where, you know, the Forge Fiend does maybe shooting better, while, and the Muller Fiends might do combat better, the Filer does both kind of well itself, depending on how you have augmented it. So yeah, for one command point, and if you've got one demon engine still kicking about, hitting on four plus ideally still, then yeah, I guarantee you're probably going to use Demon Forge quite, quite a lot. Uh, next one is Blasphemous Machines. Cost one command point. Use a stratagem just for Heretic Star's vehicle attacks in the shooting phase. Until the end of the phase, the vehicle can ignore the penalties for moving and firing heavy weapons, or for advancing and firing assault weapons. It's not the best. Uh, I think you'll find this okay if you need to move a defiler and then fire its bow cannon and last cans. Then sure, you know, yeah, it means you know you're hit you're instead of hitting on fives, you're gonna be hitting on fours. Or if you're wounded, it means you're not gonna hit on sixes, which would just be a real pain. You know, just sod's law that when you do activate it and then you actually roll to hit, you'll not get like any of the ones that you needed there. And you might have just wasted a command point, uh, you know, where you could have just saved it. Honestly, I can say this is probably going to be better in my eyes, you know, on like, say, uh, a Predator with last cannons or maybe auto cannon heavy bolter, uh, just for the amount of shots and also the reliability of getting those shots through. I just think maybe a Predator might be a better one for this, but that is debatable. Uh, then again, with, you know, Team Forge being one command point as well, that one's always a safe option if you're going to look between the two of them, but you know, you can always use this as well. So yeah, that is kind of my thoughts for the Defiler. I think it's very important more than anything is decide how you want your Defiler to operate. Do you want it to go guns, bla guns blazing, sitting still and sitting back field doing some shots? Cool. It can kind of do that and feed it some Demon Forge or barrel it down the field and you know your opponent's like well i have to deal with this otherwise huge footprint it's going to be a right old pain so yeah i just think you have to decide carefully how you want to field it i think i've got like reaper auto cannon and like a heavy you know a habit launcher on and i'm a bit like the reaper auto cannon doesn't do quite the damage i want it to do compared to maybe a last cannon might go uh, you know vehicle hunting in which case i get to reroll hits and wounds and the bow cannon it becomes scary and then I don't have the Scourge on it to maybe take on combat duties, which is also very annoying. So yeah, I am, um, it got point reduction chapter approved uh, in December, I believe, and it's now much more of a, vi uh, a viable unit uh, than it was. I think it was like, it's been reduced by about 36 points or something, which over 10%. And I just think that has given it a new lease of life. So very interested to hear what you think of the Defiler, I absolutely love it, I've got great memories of the Defiler uh, and using it in various campaigns and obviously Dawn of War as well which was excellent and with that David will probably see this video and go hey fancy a rematch and I'll tell him nope I'm going to make it to about 30 years. So yeah thanks again for watching, please comment, share, like and subscribe, check us out on social media and also on Patreon, see what we're up to on other projects as well and we'll see you on another Tabletop Salt Battle Report.